Hello, this is Franche, and it's fine if you call me by my first name, Tina. Uh, I want to talk about Easter today, and I hope you've had a wonderful Easter day. Hope you've been with family, eating a lot of food. I mean, you should. Um, and I'm on new medication for my lupus, but I'm going to go ahead with my life and just let it do what it's going to do. The first thing I want to read to you from my King James Bible, okay, is the story of the birth of the Christ child. So in chapter 2, this is how it begins. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this tax was ma first made with Cyrenius, who was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, and to Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was, while they were there, the days were accomplished that they should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not, because, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. Let me say that verse again, verse 10. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. Going on to verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Then I wanted to also go over to the book of John, okay? And beginning in, ver in chapter 1, verse 1. Because truly this is, this is what it's all about. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him, not anything made was made. And him was life and the life has, was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. So why did I start with the Christmas story, you wonder? Because that's really where Easter starts. You know, it starts with the birth of this wonderful little baby that had no hotel room, if you want to say it that way, um, and had to be delivered in a barn amongst animals and then laid in the manger, which is the place where the straw for the animals would be kept rather than on the floor, um, in swaddled clothes. And, my, you know, those of you that are mothers or fathers, you've seen what swaddling does to the for the baby so um when you think about easter you think about joy you know we have palm sunday last sunday if you think about how jesus entered into the city he, he came in on a donkey okay and and that was to show great humility um you know to put it in our terms today he could have driven in in a um Lamborghini, okay? But instead, he chose to pull in in a, a two-seater Yugo. I guess those are still out there. I don't know, but you get the picture. Or better yet, he could have come in on a moped or a scooter, like a one you stand on, like a skateboard with a stick, because it showed humility. He could afford the Lamborghini, but he chose to use the um, the skateboard because he wanted to show humility. And how much the more that we would be able to relate to Jesus because he did, um, because he did that. Because you see, I don't know about you, but I can't relate to people that have Lamborghinis. I can't really relate to them. And um, even if I had the extra money, enrolling in money, I, I'm just not sure that that would be what I would do. And I'm not picking on anybody. If that was your dream and you have it, I think that's wonderful and great. It's just probably not for me. Um, 
the other thing that happened on Palm Sunday were the people were joyous and they were using palm fronds to to wave and to pa pave the way on the on the dirt on the ground for the donkey to walk on. That's really really indicative of the people knew they may not have known really who Jesus was, but they knew that he was a holy man. They knew that he could heal people. They knew that he could bring people from the dead. They knew this about him, and they were happy, happy to have him in town uh, for Holy Week. So we get on to the Last Supper, you know, and how hard that had to have been for Jesus to break bread and be, and institute the sacrament and include Judas. Um, I have argued in the past that without Judas, we wouldn't have had uh, the crucifixion. Maybe we would have. I'm sure somehow or another it might have been that way. Uh, but more likely, Jesus would have been killed by Roman soldiers with a thrust of their, I forget what they call it, but a short sword, and killed in that manner. And uh, then a few people, you know, a dozen or so, would say, oh, how awful. Look, he's just, he, he died a terrible death. Can you believe that? But the hundreds would not have seen it happen that perhaps saw it happen on the cross. Um, everything has a plan. Everything that we go through is a part of the whole. And one of the challenges that we have as uh, adults is recognizing that everything is a part of the whole. Uh, when we look back on our lives, we might can see the the better um, indications of the greater plan rather than our limited, limited view. And then came, you know, Good Friday. And I know a lot of people say, what was good about it? What was good about it is what was promised to us in the scriptures. The angel said to, the, to, to them, don't fear, I brought you great ti good tidings of great joy. And in John, he talks about that he is the light of man. And, you know, a light cannot be overcome by darkness. It, it, you try it sometime. You try taking a flashlight, make sure it works, turn it on, and then go into a dark closet and see if that darkness overtakes that light. It can't. It's, it's impossible for it to take over that light. You know, um... So we're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be the salt of the earth, the preservers. We're supposed to be the, the thing that shows forth what's right and what's wrong. So I want to challenge you to do that. But one of the things I was thinking about today was the butterfly. If you know me, you know that I love butterflies. Everything about the life of a butterfly is incredible. And in that, can you imagine... I have a, a friend that, Vitiglio, I think is the way it's pronounced. Um, I am the most not racist person you, you probably would ever know. Uh, so this woman of color, and I don't even really know the right word to use, but she she lost the pigment and has turned uh, completely almost like an albino. And the, and, the, and the journey for her has been difficult at times. But then as I've talked to her, as we've all gotten older, she says, you know, now I embrace the fact that this was my life plan and it is what it is. Beautiful woman, beautiful woman. So perhaps when her mother had her, she thought, what a beautiful, beautiful child I've given birth to. Uh, what a beautiful child of African descent have I given birth to. And she had a brother, you know, he didn't, as far as I know, didn't have Vitiglio. I think that's how you pronounce it. And you start your life thinking that you're a part of a group, a group of black children in a, in a black community with black family. But then as you go through life, you realize something's not quite right and you start losing the pigment in your skin. Same way with a butterfly. If you think about it, there's this caterpillar and he, you know, creeps along the ground and goes up on the limbs. I mean, not limbs like in big trees, but like, you know, uh, grass stalks and vines and things like that. And and his world's great. Everything's fine. And from his perspective, the world is pretty big. Of course, we know that that's a tiny part of what we know of the earth. 
and the universe, the galaxy, everything. But he feels compelled one day to climb up higher on a stalk. Uh, I have a butterfly tree, and that is a lot of times I find a chrysalis there. And he doesn't know why. And then he feels so tired, so tired. And don't you feel tired? Isn't our lives such that um, that we're tired? We're tired of doing. We're tired of being. We're tired of being requested upon. We're tired of being diverted from our path and our plans by what other people need. But that's what we're called to do. So the, so the, the caterpillar decides, well, I'll just take a nap, okay? And he does. and But before he does that, he spins a cocoon. And he's not real sure why he's doing it. Um, but he's like, I think I feel cold, but I'm going to gonna make myself a cocoon and and uh, go into that and take a nap. And, of course, what happens is at some point later, I didn't look up the science, but, you know, a few days, a week, something, a butterfly emerges, okay? And butterflies are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful creatures. Not that the caterpillar necessarily wasn't beautiful, just in a different way. And that butterfly soars above anything the caterpillar could have ever imagined was existing on, in the world. So his world view suddenly became much, much, much bigger. And, and I have to wonder if that consciousness of that caterpillar is still intact with that butterfly. And I would like to believe that it is. And so... Many of you know that uh, I'm looking at the time. I'm trying to keep this short, but I don't think it's possible today. Uh, many of you know that I had a terrible wreck almost 30 years ago. It wasn't my fault and had lots of broken bones. And it did trigger uh, autoimmune issues, including multiple sclerosis and lupus, which is what you see the lesions on my face so frequently. Uh, but it also gave me a double closed head injury. So... I, I knew I was what they call an upper-level brain injury survivor. I knew what I had lost in terms of I knew that I couldn't cognate like I did. My IQ before the wreck was 138, and they tested it three times over two years of rehabilitation, and twice it was 98, once it was 96, so basically 90, 98 is my IQ. But with a brain injury person, oh, the normal IQ a normal IQ, there's a there's a line, let's say that line's 120. You might do a little better in a few things and a little worse in a few things like that so that it 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 levels out at whatever, 110 or whatever. But with a brain injury survivor, what happens is it, it doesn't, it's not little bitty changes. Really great, incredible things that they can do or I can do and then things that I can't do. So... I knew that things just weren't right. I didn't know how to read. I didn't know how to put the letters together. It seemed like I had been born in an alien world. So I had to relearn to read. I had to, but they discovered I could write. I can write just so far, at least. It, I've been able to write about anything. It doesn't matter what it is. So um, that was the big high. So the consciousness of the person I was before the wreck is very aware of who the, the person I was after the wreck and, and going forward into the decades afterwards of my life. So I'd like for you to think today about Easter in a different way. Think about Easter as the light of the world um, and what that means for your walk in everyday life. And even if you're, you're not a, a proclaiming Christian, and you want to not believe in God. And I truly believe that everybody has the right to choose. But there's something tugging on your heart and your intellect that knows that you see a watch laying in a field and you know there had to be somebody that created that watch. I've got a second pair of new glasses in six months, maybe four months. I think it's been five months. But anyway, because the other ones just wouldn't stay up. But I look at these and I know that I, that somebody didn't just take a bunch of stuff, you know, dirt or whatever, and mix it up, and out came these glasses. I know somebody had to make them. I know that somebody had to think about it and the form and function that it would have 
and made them, okay? So I know without a doubt, okay, that every person has that nugget of truth deep in their consciousness that there has to be something that made them. And I don't mean their mama and their daddy. I don't mean biology. Because somebody made their mama and their daddy, and somebody made the grandparents and the great-grandparents, and on and on and on. So I encourage you today to not forget that, that you are indeed a child of God. You are indeed uh, precious in his sight. Um, you are indeed the, the, the mouth, the hands, and the feet of Heavenly Father and co-creators with Jesus Christ. So I encourage you to think about that as you go forward into the spring and as we look forward to more tourists being here in the Outer Banks. All right, thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your Easter day, and I hope you have a wonderful week, and just remember to shine that light, okay? Thank you. Bye.